Welcome to this short tutorial from Pathology Made Simple at ILO Pathology. This is uh, the part 2 of apoptosis. In the part 1, uh, we uh, understood the definition of apoptosis. We uh, learned in detail about the mechanisms of apoptosis. Okay, so in this part, we will discuss mainly about the differences between apoptosis and necrosis, and we will see how we can diagnose apoptosis. And we will uh, also understand the various disorders associated with dysregulated apoptosis. And then we will end with understanding the concepts of necroptosis and pyoptosis. Coming to the differences between necrosis and apoptosis. Okay, so necrosis, as we know that it is always pathological, whereas apoptosis may be physiological or pathological. Okay, in necrosis, the adjacent groups of cells are affected, whereas in apoptosis, it is always the single cell which is affected. The cell size in necrosis is increased, whereas the cell size in apoptosis is shrunken. Necrosis is always passive, whereas we know that apoptosis is an active process. The plasma membrane in the necrosis is disrupted, whereas the plasma membrane is intact. So these are the ones which actually form the uh, apoptotic bodies which are bound by intact plasma membrane so because the plasma membrane is disrupted the content of the cells are leaked out and then that elicits an in intense inflammatory reaction so in necrosis we see lots of inflammatory reaction around these necrotic tissue whereas in apoptosis because the plasma membrane is intact and then there is no leakage of the contents of the cell or the cytoplasm there will be no inflammatory reaction so the basic difference between necrosis and apoptosis is that one we have inflammatory reaction in necrosis whereas no inflammatory reaction in apoptosis so that is why necrosis is often uh, considered as mass murder whereas apoptosis as we all know it is a form of cell suicide now how do you diagnose apoptosis the first and the foremost is to pathological examination so in histopathological examination, the apoptotic cells looks round or oval mass of intense eosinophilic cytoplasm along with the fragments of condensed nuclear chromatin. One, the cytoplasm is intensely eosinophilic. Two, there is condensation of nuclear chromatin. Here, uh, you can see that this is an hepatocyte which has undergone uh, apoptotic type of uh, cell death where you can easily see that the cytoplasm is intensely eosinophilic and then there is condensation of nuclear chromatin. Okay, so this is a uh, hematoxylin and eosin stain. If you have access to uh, you know, electron microscopy, you can even see the formation of uh, cytoplasmic blebs. You can even see the apoptotic bodies as well. Okay. Now, there are some special stains which can help in diagnosis of apoptosis, and these are the fulgen and acridine orange stain. So, this is how you diagnose uh, apoptosis on histopathological examination. So, there are other investigations where you can um, you know, diagnose apoptosis. Uh, these are you can estimate the levels of uh, cytochrome C. You, know, you can even do estimation of activated caspases, uh, estimation of annexin 5. So in the last class, we studied that uh, once apoptotic bodies are formed, these bodies, the phosphatidyl serine, which was normally in the inner membrane, in the inner side of the plasma membrane, now it is expressed outside. Okay, so these expressed phosphatidyl serine is recognized by the dye called annexin. This annexin is a phospholipid binding protein. If you see that this annexin is bound to a particular uh, cell, that means that that particular cell is undergoing apoptosis. Lastly, there is something called a tunnel technique. Tunnel uh, technique means it is a terminal deoxynucleotidyl transferase mediated DUTP NIC and labeling. Okay, this is one of the most common methods used for detecting uh, the fragmentations of uh, DNA. We all know that in apoptosis there is nuclear uh, DNA fragmentation. So this is this tunnel technique is the one which we uh, routinely employ to uh, look for DNA fragmentation. One, morphological examination, uh, either by histopathological examination or electron microscopy. Two, estimation of uh, cytochrome C, then caspases, annexin 5, and lastly, the tunnel technique. What do you mean by dysregulated apoptosis? The apoptosis is not regulated. 
we know that the regulation of apoptosis is basically by the balance between the anti-apoptotic and the pro-apoptotic genes okay so whenever there is an imbalance or whenever there is a dysregulation we can expect some amount of um, you know disorder in apoptotic process and then uh, we encounter certain forms of diseases now let us see what are all the diseases which you can encounter uh, when there is dysregulation of apoptosis that means when there is a too little apoptosis or when there is too much apoptosis so when we say too little apoptosis it basically means uh, there is a defective apoptosis and then that means to say that there is increased survival of that particular cell okay so this type of dysregulated apoptosis is most commonly seen in uh, autoimmune disorders and then uh, various forms of cancers now what happens when there is too much apoptosis it means to say that increased apoptosis means excessive cell death so overall you can expect uh, too much apoptosis one it can be in the form of a neurodegenerative diseases okay it is uh, often seen in ischemic injury as in myocardial infarction in many viral infections the death of these uh, virus infected cells is always because of uh, too much apoptosis now what is uh, necroptosis so necroptosis the name itself says that it is a combination of necrosis and apoptosis so morphologically it resembles necrosis now what do you mean by that it means that there is an evidence of rupture of plasma membrane whereas in the in in mechanism wise it is programmed so morphologically it looks or resembles necrosis whereas by mechanism it resembles apoptosis that is the reason why it is called as necroptosis what is more important here is that here there is no role of caspases okay that is why we call this as caspase independent type of uh, cell death so now we say it is programmed and we also say that it is caspase independent so now who are all the players who play a more important role in this type of uh, cell death these are rip1 and rip3 rip is receptor interacting protein kinase okay so whenever these kinases are activated so it leads to decreased mitochondrial atp it leads to increased reactive oxygen species and then rupture of lysosomal membranes so the end result is the morphological appearance of necrosis and that is the reason why it is also referred to as programmed necrosis uh, the examples where we can encounter necroptosis um, the formation of mammalian growth plate uh, in cases of myocardial infarction in cases of reperfusion injury in the cases of pancreatitis in the cases of uh, neurodegenerative diseases like multiple sclerosis and uh, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis and some inflammatory bowel diseases like Crohn's disease so these are the various disease entities where uh, we can expect the combination of necrosis and apoptosis and uh, thus uh, referred to as programmed necrosis or necroptosis now the last part of today's um, tutorial is pyroptosis now what is pyroptosis pyroptosis occurs in microbial infected cells the name pyroptosis is actually derived from the greek word where pyro means fire or fever and tosis means uh, falling okay so since it is in uh, since this type of uh, cell death involves the release of inflammatory mediators and then causing a uh, fever it is also referred to as pro inflammatory programmed cell death okay now what happens here is that once these microbial infection occurs the microbial products once these enters into the cell they actually activate a multi protein complex called inflammasome okay so this inflammasome activates caspases 1 so this caspase 1 is neither an neither an initiator caspase nor an executioner caspases okay it has got nothing to do with the regular uh, type of apoptosis hmm? so what caspase 1 does is it activates or uh, it converts the interleukin 1 precursor to active interleukin 1 so it is this interleukin 1 which actually uh, mediates uh, the onset of fever and then they recruit the leukocytes okay so unlike apoptosis the cell death here in pyroptosis is characterized by swelling and a loss of membrane integrity so once uh, there is loss of membrane integrity we know that there is always the release of inflammatory cells so that means it also has a characteristics of um, sort of necrosis but then uh, what is more important here is that this this release of interleukin 1 which results in fever and that is the reason why the term pyroptosis is used here the significance of pyroptosis is during infections you know pyroptosis can be a beneficial event for the host 
whereas excessive pyroptosis is always detrimental to the host because it may lead to the development of severe sepsis and septic shock. So in summary, in this uh, short tutorial, we uh, discussed the differences between necrosis and apoptosis. We know, uh, we learned as to how to uh, diagnose apoptosis. We um, talked about the disorders associated with dysregulated apoptosis and then we understood the concepts of necroptosis and pyroptosis. Thank you.